to Wednesday, April 26, 2023. That's right. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Midweek, hump day. Yeah. We've got a big show. We've got two guests here. Uh, got a lot of things coming up this weekend, the so next weekend, much. and the next. Uh, between, uh, we got Derby coming up, and then Heritage Week is coming up. We're going to be talking about all of it. So maybe we should just. Man, I'm, you're making me tired already. Get Let's get going. <laughs> Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of Around 10. I'm Harvey Couch and that is Kathy Lindsay. Hello. Thanks for... We made it. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, was there a question? It was hit and miss this morning, man. By the way, this is... That's Kathy Lindsay and I'm a hard cast. We've, we've That's cool. I just didn't want Harvey. anybody to get confused. It's fine. Well, you know. <laughs> um, you we were talking about how much is going on. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. We events do. that are. Do you think this is the busiest time of Frankfurt? Like as far as just stuff happening? I think because we've been kind of, you know, the winter and mm -hmm. we're just kind of like laying low. There's things happening, but now that it's getting. Yeah, so spring. Not, everybody's kind of Horses emerging. Are running. And then all of the events start happening and the calendar starts filling up. So I think just the, the transition from winter to, you know, just spring, summer mm -hmm. and events, it just seems like it's all just yeah. crazy. You got the end of school coming and so oh, all yeah. of those things are happening. Yeah. And so it's an exciting so time. It is. The weather's warming up. It is. It's There's nice. There's pollen on everything. True. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, yeah, but can I can I tell you a little bit about last night? Please. Quickly. Oh yeah, yeah. You were you went to uh, you had an event. Yes, right? we went to Cincinnati last night uh -huh. to see uh, Ben Folds play okay. with the Cincinnati Pops. Yeah, I was so looking forward to it. We right. had it was our like Valentine's Day gift oh, tickets that we were like, oh, we'll go do this. Um, ben, ben Folds, he plays the piano, right? He does. Okay, and he's great. Mm -hmm. Love him. We've seen him multiple he has times. His own band, Ben Folds. Ben Folds Five. Five. I don't think they they, they don't really exist anymore. anymore. Okay. Yeah. But he does his thing, okay. and and uh, and then he does these things where he goes and plays with different uh, cities. Pops. That's cool. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the music that he writes kind of lends itself to like the big. So is stuff. it like Swiss, is it like supposed to be Ben Folds music or is it? Yeah, like, it's his music. Okay. All right, so and they like, they just they back him up. Cool. And they fill it in. Okay. It's not so, the five anymore. It's like the forty-five it's or a however lot. many. <laughs> and they were great. Yeah. Okay. However, mm. <laughs> we were running late. Uh, of course, we were waiting until after work. The show starts at 7.30. It's in Cincinnati. We get there, and mm. we had enough time. You got down the hill on 75. It wasn't a total yeah. disaster. Okay. We got there quickly enough to park, grab a bike to eat, and okay. then, like, hightail it over to the music hall. Okay. Feeling good. We got there with five minutes to spare. We get in there, sit down. Hey. The seats were great. Nice. And I liked the people around us. Sometimes okay. that's right. the thing. Never know what you're going to get. Yeah. So he comes out and starts playing, and it's just like, oh. And it's beautiful. Mm. The, you're, the in, you're immediately in your happy space. Yes. Okay. About three songs in, mm. I'm like, it's getting hot in here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I start looking around. Do you think, could like, it have been like because you had been go, 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 maybe. and you so ate I just, the food I was and like, running in? Okay, give me a minute. Give me a yeah. minute. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, it's really hot. <laughs> and then my vision starts getting blurry. Oh, no. And I start looking around and I like put, <laughs> put my hand on Steve's knee and I was like, <laughs> and that's I don't the know, universal sign for when things you go are not to good. a show and, and at the symphony and the pops mm -hmm. they're really particular you're supposed about, to be see you're not supposed to like you're get not up supposed and, to get you know, up and leave during the thing or, or all that no right, right, and i was like oh no oh. <laughs> and i was like i can't i got it i handed my i had my coat in my lap and i handed it to steve i was like I gotta go. Okay, He's like, let me yeah. ask like, you. Nah, nah. Now, are you are you close to the aisle, or are you nope, sitting right, right in the middle smack of the row? Down in the middle. I mean, because they were great seats. So yeah, we were right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So, how many people do you have to climb over? About eight. Okay. And I they mean, were they, really it could nice. Be worse. Now, I will say, I've been to in in the Louisville uh, Center for the Arts. Yeah. I forget the bomb. I don't know which is it, the Baumhart Theater or the whatever yeah. the big one is. Upper the upper level Whitney. that goes yeah. all the way across. It's yes. like sixty seats. Yes, no, and I've sat in the middle of that before and been like, I'm not. No. It's, here I am. <laughs> yeah, there was nothing out there. there I, I had and you're go. getting out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so I, I looked at the, at the girl next to me, and she was really nice. And I, I patted her on the arm. I was like, I think I'm getting sick. She's like, Okay. <laughs> 
like, you know, so that's like. That's a good get, way to say it. Not just like, excuse, yeah, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> this is an emergency. So okay. they all get up and I get out and there's ushers there at the door. Mm. I mean, I don't know which one to approach. And by that time, me standing up, I was like, oh. oh. you're triggered. You're fully triggered oh. now. And I'm like oh, listing, no. you know. So I go, the, uh, there's somebody, uh, an usher at the door. And I was Steve like. Steve was right behind you, right? Just no, I told trip. him to stay there. Okay. All right. Didn't want to uh, make it a bigger deal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I'm, I'm just dehydrated uh-huh. or something. Okay. So uh, I said, I think I'm getting sick. And mm. so they like let me out. <laughs> and then I go out in the lobby and there's like no chairs. Okay. None. And I'm like looking around, looking around. I like, I got to sit down. It was much cooler out in the lobby. Right. So I like head over and I, I am, I'm like walking like this and I found some stairs to sit on. So I sat on the stairs, yeah. the, the usher came over she was like, are you okay? I was like, I just, I got really hot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, she was like, I'm going to call a medic. Oh, <laughs> I was like, ah. So I didn't know if I was going to faint mm-hmm. or like, right yeah, other things whatever. yeah mm-hmm. and so i was like oh, just let me get to a bathroom cold water and she's like no i need you to stay here i'm like no i'm going to <laughs> the restroom <laughs> so i go into the restroom and then uh, another lady usher like manager type mm-hmm. comes in there and she went and she got me some water and then she came in and she was like is your husband steve and i said yeah and she's like, he's out there <laughs> <laughs> tell him i'm okay yeah so then outside the restroom, there were benches you could sit on. And they also okay. had TV, so you could see what was going oh, on. Oh, well, that's nice. So we sat there for like four songs. Okay. And then I was like, okay, I think I can go back in. And I'm just like, it was so weird. Mm. And then I felt bad about going in because the lady I was next to, I was like, yeah, I was everything's, coming everything's back. Everything's good now. Yeah, I'm good. But, you know, I'm thinking, you know, when we were talking yesterday, I was like, I have something weird going on in my head. Mm. And I have like the vertigo mm. thing. Mm. I took a Dramamine in the car because I wasn't feeling great. <laughs> and then I think I had a hot flash. Mm. And it happens. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. It, and it was like the perfect storm of just like, oh, no. And I about fell out of my seat. Yeah. And mm. I sweated it out. Great. So I'll say this. Good job recognizing. Because, <laughs> you know, you don't want to just have something bad happen in the seat, right? So you Horrible. recognize that things yeah. are. But maybe now you know. Maybe not so much so fast. Like, it seems like maybe yeah. the trigger was the And I was staying. I was rushing. drinking water. We didn't even have any alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I was drinking water. And, okay. yeah. And so that's that's what the, the one usher lady said. She goes, she goes, that's what aging will do for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank you. Uh, but we got back in there. Okay. We heard the rest of the concert. And he didn't play very long. I mean, mm. I know I sat out some. <laughs> but it started at 730. He was done before 9. Okay. Yeah. So, hmm. yeah. but well, it was an experience. You gosh. asked how my night was. Yeah. So there you go. Well, I'm glad that <laughs> you made it through. Okay. <laughs> did. You didn't call me from the, you know, Cincinnati hospital. Yeah. I, don't, I can't be there tomorrow, right. but it was great. Okay. I highly recommend Ben Folds. If you are a fan, mm-hmm. uh, this is a little different when he plays with pops. Cause he's a little more buttoned up. Okay. Usually he's all crazy. Yeah, I was going to say, he's kind he's of a like, high energy and, guy, right? Yeah, and he does a lot of interaction with the audience. He still did that last mm-hmm. night, but uh, okay. yeah, it's good. Well, I don't know how I can top that story. Okay, we just hung we're out done. At the Bye. House and, you know. <laughs> um, okay, well, like we talked about, there's so much going on. We want to get to our guests, but, but first, we want to talk about our question of the day. Okay. It is National Library Month. Yes. We've talked about that already. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to talk about that later. And, uh, Today is National Library Outreach Day. Okay. That's like bookmobiles and stuff. So that has us wondering, Kathy, Mm -hmm. what is one book from your childhood that you loved? Okay. I have it I knew that you would. Yeah. So please tell me. Well, big Judy Bloom fan. Right. (laughs) Sure. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Okay. Come on. And then the movie's out or coming out. Oh, is it? Like right now. Yeah. Okay. Or this weekend uh, or something. uh, it's like Super Fudge is coming out too. They're developing yeah. that, I think, on Disney Plus. Yep. Um, okay. Well, that I have an eleven-year-old who's getting ready she, to read. She's it, getting ready to read it. Okay. We so also who was the other uh, um, the other female author? I had Beverly her, Cleary. Beverly Cleary. Yeah. So I tried to get one of the boys into uh, Ramona and Beezus. Oh yeah. And uh, it wasn't quite. He it was just I don't know. He's he's seven. He just wasn't quite ready to get into it. And it's some of that stuff's a little dated, mm-hmm. you know, written in the fifties. Yeah. But um, I remember Freckle Juice was my favorite yeah. when I was a kid. I don't yeah. know why that just sticks in my head. I'd like read it over and over again. Maybe it was like one of the first chapter books I read, and so mm-hmm. I felt like such a big like. Yeah. Ooh, it's hey, big, look at no me. Pictures in here. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, so those are the two. But this is a great question because I will take suggestions because I always like to have new things for the kids 
Quincy's been on this like uh, he re- he, the Rick Re- Reardon, Reardon, okay. whatever. It's all like you know, Greek gods and dragons, oh, and like he's yeah. totally into that fantasy stuff, which is great. It and is. mythology. Yeah, but it's like we need to diversify. We need just a few more things besides just dragons and you know gods. <laughs> demigods or whatever little, so little freckle juice here and there yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so we'll take any suggestions that you have yeah, let us know what is the one childhood book uh that you loved hopefully our guests maybe will give us a couple couple yeah. answers on this as well so um all right let us know hit us up on our facebook page or you can do the text machine you can do that at 502-353-0233 uh and that can be anytime even if we're not live that way we can uh share your answers maybe next show on friday so all that being said what do you say we open up the community calendar you got your fan here just in case not a prop (laughs) it's for real just in case it's necessary (laughs) uh so let's do our community calendar okay all right here we are here we are hi Thanks for sitting through that long story. <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I've got, I've, I have liquid, I have fan, we're good. <laughs> but I could good. miss seeing you guys today. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to introduce ourselves? Yeah, guests? absolutely. Okay. So, we got Jessica Stavros. Stavros. You got me in you my head. It. I had it down. I did it. And then you're like, uh, Executive Director at Liberty Hall's Historic Site, uh, as well as Jane Henderson Goddard, who is an architectural historian. And we're going to talk about a presentation that she's doing. Uh, at the library, but this is all about Frankfurt Heritage Week, yes. which is a huge event here in town. And like we said, this is when things are happening yeah. in Frankfurt. May seventh through thirteenth is uh, is our window for Frankfurt Heritage Week. I know Jessica, you've got some stuff kicking off even, even sooner than that, mm-hmm. but we want to focus on on what's going on here in a couple of weeks. But um, tell us everything. Well, maybe not everything, but let's. I'm just kidding. Well, I did just want to interject about the children's book. Oh, please. Oh, yeah. um, Liberty Hall is the home of the Brown family, John and mm-hmm. Margareta Brown, yeah. and their direct descendant, who as a young child spent time at Liberty Hall, is Margaret Wise Brown. Okay. Who wrote Good Night Moon, okay. oh. Runaway Bunny, yeah. and hundreds and hundreds of children's books. So she's a very famous children's author. Well, and there you go. What about Encyclopedia Brown? Was he? No, he was my dude. <laughs> okay. I mean, he was one of my favorites, too. He was my dude. I didn't but... know if he had any relation or not. Um, but thanks for having us. It really, yeah. it really means a lot. And obviously, Liberty Hall is... Um, a center of historic preservation for Frankfurt, and that's really the basis of how Frankfurt Heritage Week starts and Preservation Month. So we're really glad to be a part of it. And we really wanted to do something that we don't normally do. So um, we still have our tours, and of course, but we've added three different events. One is a talk on Thursday night. I think it's the 10th or the 11th, Thursday the 11th. Um, And it's at 6 o'clock with Dr. Stephen Walker, who has written the first book about John Brown and um, his life at Liberty Hall. So we really consider him one of Frankfurt's founding fathers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's giving his talk specific to the Brown influence on the founding and early years of Frankfurt's development. So that will be on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, May 11th at 6 p.m. On Saturday, we have a really fun event. That is, um, we're doing an exhibit opening called Memories from Light. And it is um, an exhibit about the historic photography in the Liberty Hall collection. So Mm. daguerreotypes, ambrotypes, tintypes. Oh, wow. And so not only will we showcase the um, various things in our collection, but we also have a talk and actual portrait session where you can come and sit and have really? your tin type oh. made oh, that's cool. in wow. the port in the yeah. parlor of the Orlando Brown House. Nice. So we're really excited about that. And I highly what is that? that is on Saturday okay. the thirteenth. Okay. So on, yes. on that one it says that uh, that costumes are encouraged. Yes. Which is well, cool. And this this is like not like Gatlinburg, right? Like right. the old Right. Slates yeah. where it's right. kind of negative, kind of reverse, yeah. you know. So um, yeah, I would encourage costumes. Put your best outfit on and right. sit in the parlor in a grand chair and have your tintype made how cool um, but it does say pre-registration is required yes so there are only so many l- slots libertyhall.org That's if you it. want to do that okay mm-hmm. awesome and then the last thing we have going on is something called mother's garden which uh, liberty hall has nearly five acres of public gardens it's open every day of the year 
And there is a, a section of the garden that connects Liberty Hall with the Orlando Brown house. And Orlando Brown was the second son of John and Margareta. So not only is Mother's Garden uh, the physical connection between the two houses, but it's also a symbolic connection between generations of family who have their roots in a place. Mm-hmm. So for Heritage Week, um, we are doing something called Mother's Garden, which is going on now until... Um, Mother's Day, and you can, for a donation, have a plant planted in Mother's Garden in honor of the mother figure in your life. Mm -hmm. And so they will be planted in that section, and you can come remember or share stories. And then on Mother's Day in the evening, we're doing a twilight dedication um, a candlelight ceremony for those who are planted in the garden. I love that. That is yeah. so cool. Well, you know, yeah. your heritage, a lot of that comes from the women in your life, sure. whether they're your mothers or your grandmothers or aunties or things right. like that. So yeah, it's just that. one way for us to honor how we receive that heritage every season. Sure. I know we appreciate uh, how Liberty Hall gets involved in the community and brings people oh, yeah. in and the garden is beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were out at uh, the um, Earth Day celebration oh, Saturday. You did. Yeah. yeah. We were out there and and Liberty Hall was there and they had the cutest setup. They had taken clippings from the garden oh. and uh, and sticks and you could come and you could take a stick and use uh, clippings from the the garden, the flowers mm-hmm. and stuff and make a flower wand. Mm. And then you could go and go through the garden and try to identify what was on your wand in the garden. Oh, it was cool. so and cool. And that is really to honor our greatest mother of all, yeah. Mother Earth. Mother Earth. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. that was great. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, the, again, we appreciate Liberty Hall and everything they do. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you all have some great events set up for that week. Again, May 7th through 13th is Frankfurt Heritage Week. Um, all right, Jane, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, you, <laughs> uh, you are presenting uh, at the at the public library, Paul Sawyer Public Library, on May 8th, um, The Singing Bridge, A Structure That Speaks to Us All. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I've worked uh, as a preservation professional for I don't want to say quite how long it will date me, <laughs> but um, in back in the 1980s, I worked at, with the Department of Transportation in their environmental division. And as bridges were declared historic mm-hmm. across the state, they did historic surveys and identified probably almost 100 bridges at the time that were eligible for the National Register. So anytime uh, the Transportation Cabinet, Federal Highway Administration, was getting ready to remove those bridges, Mm. they had to document them in a certain way. And uh, we would document them with a large format camera and lots of documentation and send it into the uh, National Park Service Historic American Engineering Record, Mm. which is a wonderful place. And that's how I got... Hooked on bridges. Yeah. (laughs) And living in Frankfurt for quite a while now, um, just always fascinated with the Singing Bridge. And uh, there are files, historic digital files, both in the the UK library or UK holdings, as well as other places, U of L, other schools and things. And found, in doing some of my research, I found some awesome historic photographs. Uh, My favorite is the one that they took in 1893 when the bridge was being built. Mm. Mm. And you could actually see people there from the bridge company working on the bridge. Uh, I think I sent you guys a picture. Uh, There's actually a lady standing in there. I couldn't tell if it was a lady or a man in an uh, overcoat. But uh, there's another fellow standing on the very top cord of the bridge Mm. as he's up there riveting and pinning the thing. Oh, my gosh. And so it's just once I found that, I said, okay, I'm I'm in for good. (laughs) I've got to do (laughs) way more research. (laughs) And so I found, I think with the talk, if people come and see it, uh, I have probably about 30 or 40, some postcards, some historic. uh, It's been such a landmark in Frankfurt for so many years. It is um, one of the few, the King Bridge Company was the one that constructed it from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the few pin connected uh, late 19th century bridges left in Kentucky, one of the oldest. Uh, Up in Ohio, where uh, King Bridge Company built a lot of bridges, they have quite a few more. Mm. But I don't think Kentucky has quite that many more. I need to do a little more search and find out what we have left. But uh, King Bridge Company was the second most prolific bridge company. I think there was another one called Champion that built at least 70 or 80 historic bridges in Kentucky. And King, I think, ended up building almost 20. So, uh, but they, we've documented quite a few of them. I did that myself back in the 80s. Right. Uh, and it's just, 
it's fascinating stuff how they produce these things. Mm-hmm. Um, the city would hire, they would realize they needed a, the first bridge at that location was a covered bridge. Back yeah. in the 1850s, yeah. I've got pictures of that. I love and my Paul Sawyer print. I know, I love bridge. it. Yeah. I love, uh, lots of <laughs> lots of beautiful things of that. And uh-huh. so back um, when they realized that during flood times, uh, steamboats couldn't get under that bridge. So, so the federal government said to the uh, city of Frankfurt, "You need a higher bridge, and mm. you need a metal one, not wood." Mm. And so they hired King, and that's the way cities would do it. They would. Um, hire, find a bridge company they liked. The company would come down, do the measurements, go back to the Cleveland factory, build the parts, then ship the parts back down. And, and it was so precise that they hired local people, a lot of times local workers, to actually help them put the bridge together. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so fascinating about that picture is that you see all these local guys and they're so proud of themselves oh, building yeah. this bridge yeah and so uh it's i've just had a lot of fun with research for this thing it's absolutely just, it's uh uh something they just can't quite give up <laughs> it's a great name for your talk thank you mm-hmm. I, I used to I have a lot of history at that location um my first job professional job in frankfurt was with the kentucky heritage council in 77 they were located at the old YMCA. Oh, wow. We yeah. had offices where you could open the windows and hear the, the ducks on the river. Yeah. We could hear the bridge singing to uh, us I wish as it was cars still went across. able to do that. Uh, yeah. an, another uh, love of mine, that old building. <laughs> I wish yeah. it could be saved. Yeah. yeah. But it was the greatest location to have a job. Of course. Just uh, yeah. wonderful. Right downtown. We walked downtown to eat. Sure. And, um, Great, lots of good memories there. Uh, well, the Singing Bridge is like the, it's the staple of downtown Frankfurt. It is. It's just it like is, yeah. when you see that, you know where you are. And Frankfurt should be very proud that they yeah. have it and maintain it. I mean, right. they, it's there's no way that bridge is going anywhere. Right. So, right. Um, well, preservation I, is tops with them. I, I think this will be a, a very interesting event for people to attend and, and get the information. I hope and, so. I hope and so. To, to pass it on. That's the important thing. That's the important yeah. part. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Get young people interested in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Jane, your presentation is on Monday, May eighth, at six p.m. Right at the at the library at the library in the River Room. Right, right, right there. So, um, and they I'm ask excited. the folks to register for that too if they want to attend. Exactly. Um, but that sounds like a great event. So, I think for all of the events for Heritage Week, any registration you could do in yeah, advance sure. is a great help to anyone <clears throat> putting on the event. Yeah. So we'd go to point. FrankfurtHeritageWeek.com for all of the information and about how you can register for events and. And uh, a f- complete list of everything going on because it'll be a great week. I appreciate you all being here. Thank so, you. So yeah. we, got, we got Jessica's pick for her her, oh, her yeah. favorite uh, childhood book. Jane, do you have any that you want to? Uh, the, <clears throat> the one of the, the historical one of the building the bridge probably would okay. be okay. The, the, my favorite Did one. you have yeah. a particular book? My favorite children's book? Or just any book. When you were a child. Oh, gosh. Didn't have to be I, children, You know, it? when I was 10, and I get it for any 10-year-old I know, yeah. uh, The Westing Game okay. was my favorite. Okay. Mysteries. Okay. Encyclopedia mm. Brown. I don't, I don't any, know that one. That sounds Solving really, any kind of mystery. It's on the list. Yeah. It's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. thank you all so much for being here. It's always so much fun for to be us. here. Absolutely. Thank you. Just have to come back. Anytime. We will. <laughs> we will. All, all right. right. Okay, well, let's take a quick break. We got, okay. again, lots of stuff a to cover. A lot of stuff to cover. Uh, and we pre- appreciate our guests very much. And we'll uh, be back right after this. In today's fast paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Meet Jeff and Abby, your compass in the new age of advertising. Your guide on the trail to new business. Because these days, you need a guide. Your customers are spread out everywhere. And you need to be able to reach them anywhere. On the internet, on cable, on streaming services. Wherever they are, we are. Let Jeff and Abby make the perfect custom plan for your business and your budget. FPB Advertising, we're everywhere. Contact us and talk to Jeff or Abby today. All right, we're back. And you're staying hydrated, which is important. Yeah. yeah. Super important. <laughs> um, we've got lots of answers on our, on our question of the day. Should we jump into that? We Let, should. Let's do that because everybody wants it. to hear. Um, all right. Oh, and uh, – and, 
Jane Dang. shared as she was leaving Laura Ingalls Wilder. Was yeah, her. the Little House on the Prairie yeah. series. There's yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, those are good. And they're good. We've, we've got that set. I think we've read one. <laughs> right. We've seen all of Little House on the Prairie series. That's a point. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, Crystal Simpson says she was a Bailey School kids girl. Okay. She went to the library every weekend for a different one. Okay, well, that's good. Zach McDonald says scary so- scary stories to tell in the dark was mm. my go-to. Uh, great art and great stories. Uh, Amanda Holt says uh, Charlotte's Web. That's a good one. And mm-hmm. Shel Silverstein. Oh, yeah. Love those books. Yeah. Uh, I got those all of those for, for the boys, and, yeah, those are great she also likes scary stories to tell in the dark i don't know if i've seen if i've read that one before we got some i got some on the list now uh leslie smith says in third grade mrs johnson read the lion the witch and the wardrobe to us and she loved it loved it that is uh is that c.s lewis is it? that part of the uh it's like prince caspian and they're like a series of books in that series Yeah. yeah Uh, Crystal Simpson also says Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events is also a great series. Okay. Uh, David Hecker, one of the earliest books I remember really liking was Andrew Henry's Meadow. Okay. I also enjoyed the Hardy Boys books. We did too. Oh, man. I yeah. love, my dad used to read me those yeah. in bed. Those are, that was yeah. like my He favorite. said he got those passed down from older brothers. And yeah, I remember those. And uh, Zach McDonald says he was weird and also really liked Edgar Allan Poe's Collected Works. Oh, Okay. It's interesting. Let me tell you what, at, at the school library, and I don't know if it was like fifth grade maybe, uh, you could never get a wrinkle in time because it was always checked out. And mm. people were mad because it was their turn to check out a wrinkle in time. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I know. Strange. Maybe they should have gotten a couple extra copies. Memories. <laughs> City schools, <laughs> small right. budget. Right. Uh, okay. Well, it, please share if you if you have a good one. Yeah. Because uh, the, uh, these are my favorite kind of questions that we can then use. That yeah, people can absolutely. use because they're like, "Ooh, I'll get that for my niece or my right. grandchild or my daughter, son." Um, all right. We're still in our community calendar, so let's get get back to that and okay. tell people about all the things that are happening around town. All right. Uh, besides Frankfurt Heritage Week, which is going to be great, and we'll it's gonna be awesome. keep telling people about that as it gets closer. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a bench dedication at Dolly Graham Park. I we think. do. This is happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Dolly Graham Park. Uh, the Frankfurt Lexington chapter of the Lynx Incorporated will join with the city of Frankfurt Parks, Recreation, and Historic Sites Department to dedicate a positivity bench in honor of Frankfurt native mother and longtime parks manager Dolly Graham. Uh, the positivity bench Program is a national initiative of the Lynx Incorporated to build a safe space for people to talk about the issues affecting them. And I know tomorrow during that, they'll have the mayor's going to be there. Representative Derek Graham's going to be there because it's his mother, who mm-hmm. uh, Dolly Graham. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there's another bench there that has been dedicated to her. But this is this is an, another one that's specifically related uh, with this uh, chapter of the Lynx Incorporated to talk about a place to, for you can go, so, and it's just designed specifically to uh, talk about positive things in your life and have a have a chat with somebody, really just to make them uh, feel confident and inspired. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't been down to Dolly Graham Park since oh the gosh. renovation, you need to do that. It's great. It's awesome. It has everything. Um, all right, so that's tomorrow. On Friday uh, from 9 a.m. to noon, it's the uh, Kentucky State University Day of Jazz. Um, at uh, Bradford Hall's Carl Smith Auditorium. Uh, There'll be clinics, workshops, and performances, and the event is free and open to the public. So check that out Friday from 9 a.m. to noon uh, at Bradford Hall on the campus of Kentucky State University. Great. A lot of of jazzy things happening. Yeah, and then so, (laughs) you know, for more jazz, because we are talking about International Jazz Day on Friday uh, at 7 p.m. is at the Grand Theater. Uh, $20, the... uh, the big performance there uh, at seven o'clock. A tribute to our living legends. That's right. We have all the folks. Great lineup. Folks here from Frankfurt and from around Frankfurt. Uh, with our own uh, former mayor Bill May on the drums. Um, and again, I think you all went over all yep. everybody who's going to be there. Uh, tickets are twenty dollars, and you just need to go to thegrandky.com for tickets. Um, oh, and also as part mm. of the celebration, yep. uh, while that's happening too. Uh, Trayvon, the Trayvon King Band is going to okay. be playing on St. Clair hmm. uh, in front of Trifecta. 
and that's from seven to ten, and that didn't cost anything. Okay, you can just go down there. And maybe Friday if you night. go to the to the Grand Theater event and you get overheated inside, you can just step out. Yeah, and, and get... you're still entertained, and you get fresh air. <laughs> I will tell you, when I went back in, it was yeah. much cooler. It's like somebody at the music hall was like, "Huh, maybe it's too hot in there." And they you don't think it had anything to do with your internal temperature? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Hey, it was a like I said, it was a no. It's all good. We've been, we've been perfect there. storm of events. Yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, do you want some mulch, Kathy? I need mulch, but I don't want any. I don't want to deal okay. with it. <laughs> well, you get, there's free mulch to be had. Okay. Uh, this Saturday, the city's division of solid waste waste is giving away free mulch from 9 a.m. to noon on Flynn Avenue. Eight. Uh, 8 a.m. to noon. Yeah. Why did I say 9? I, I mean, I literally no looked at it and I know. said 8. Uh, from 8 a.m. to noon uh, on Flint Avenue, they'll have large equipment on site to load pickups, trailers, or dump trucks. Uh, for small amounts, please bring your own containers. Uh, it's open to everyone. All participants must sign a waiver. The event may be canceled due to rain. Updates will be posted on the city's Facebook page and the Frank Waste app. Yeah, so they're just going to be there on Flint Avenue. Bring a truck. Yeah, load or you bring up some, some buckets mulch. or whatever, just to get your free mulch. Okay. That's Saturday. All right. Uh, plant sale. You all discussed this the other day. The Capital Area Master Gardeners is having its annual plant sale on Saturday, April 29th, uh, from nine to two, and that's at Lakeview Park. Um, there's going to be vegetables, herbs, perennials, native plants, much more. Uh, and those are $2 a plant. Or if you want a tree, it's $5. Mm. Cool. So native trees at that. Yeah. <laughs> so a silent auction will take place. Uh, and gardening items from local vendors will be for sale. Nice. Yep. That's I a, think they're also going to have painting and stuff for kids. Yep. Uh, and food and from food. the Cattlemen's Association. Yeah. So just go... Um, Free seeds available. So it sounds like a great event at yep. Lakeview Park this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2. It's Check packed. that out. Damn packed. I know. Uh, also, this weekend, the Bluegrass Writers Coalition, uh, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, is sponsoring the Conference of Writers from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday at the Frankfurt Country Club. Uh, the multi genre annual event is open to all. Among this year's feature presenters are Richard Taylor, Frank X. Walker, and Stephen M. Vest. Cost for the conference is $85, which includes lunch, workshops, and a panel of writing professions and professionals, and with all proceeds going to support BWC's mission to promote literature in all forms across Kentucky. If you want to register or get additional details, please visit the BWC website at bluegrasswriterscoalition.com. All right. Uh child abuse awareness there's a a carnival resource fair and a family fun run which you know all about right yeah i do (laughs) that's happening uh saturday uh from 10 a.m to 3 p.m and it's going to be out at western hills out at the track uh so it's free and they're going to have food they're going to have games resources prizes uh registration for that starts at 9 a.m and again it's free uh, so something to take the kids to go do. There's going to be things for them to do, and then you can register for the uh, um, fun run, family fun run. Nice. <laughs> um, then this is the big event. This is one Saturday. of my favorite events I of love the this. year, and yeah. it's this weekend. It's uh, the Kentucky Common Fest. It's Saturday from noon to five on the South Lawn of the State Capitol. Live music, arts vendors, food trucks, beer and bourbon garden, derby themed crafts, a farmer's market, and much more. Uh, the food trucks include Crave Street Kitchen, Community Q, M and B Eats, Amazing Gracie's, Red Top Dog, All Tied Up, which is great. Name. Taylor Bells and TNY TNY Party Rentals. Music lineup on the main stage begins at noon with Small Batch Brass. Sorry, Atari plays at one fifteen. The Possum Queens at two thirty, and Big Black Cadillac will close out starting at three forty five. Family and friends will provide music throughout the day at the Beer Garden, which will host a large variety of breweries, distilleries, and wineries. It's a big event. So big. I went last year, and again, they've got the big stage with the music going all along the... But not so big. It doesn't feel crowded, right? Because that's a big space. It's a big space, yeah. yeah. I mean... But, I mean, it's the big city yeah, stage. Yeah. I mean, and they have it there in front of the annex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all along the walkway are they've got like art vendors. The farmers market was there, okay. um, and then all the food trucks along the street as well on the opposite side. 
And then over uh, on top of the um, the top level of the parking garage is where they have the beer garden. Okay. And they'll have, again, they're going to have wine, beer, and, and There were a bunch. I, I mean, I was, when they, they had the full screen up, I mean, there were a bunch of local, Lots. not just ones here in town, That's which we love. Right. We love yeah, all yeah, the yeah. local ones, but then there's a lot yeah. of regional and Kentucky uh, breweries and distilleries. So, so be that, great. that is a great event. Noon to five. So there's okay. stuff hang, uh, happening in the morning. Yep. Go do that. Mm-hmm. Go get your mulch and all that. Yep. <laughs> then head up to the Capitol anytime between noon and five. Okay. I'm game. Okay. I mean, I'm unfortunately going. I have a soccer game to coach in the afternoon, so that may make oh, it a little ours bit is harder. In the morning. Yeah. yeah. I have one in the morning too. I have two children. So unfortunately. Busy. So. <laughs> um, all right. Bert, tell us about Bourbon and Browns. Bourbon and Browns. This is happening Saturday as well, six to nine. Uh, it's at Liberty Hall. They say celebrating our French connections is the theme of the 2023 Bourbon and Browns event at Liberty Hall Historic Site, set in the gardens at Liberty Hall and inspired by General Lafayette's visit in 1825. You know, they got that sign up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Come sip bourbon and champagne with our honorary chair, the engaging Frenchman, Julian Pierre Echer. (laughs) Echer. I don't know how to say it. Uh, who founded the Lafayette. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not how you say it. Isher. Isher? I think Isher. Isher. I don't want to say itcher. It's not itcher. Okay. I-C-H-E-R. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who founded the Lafayette uh, Trail Marker Program, which we are a part of there at Liberty Hall. Enjoy this distiller's showcase created by a full plate. Catered Listen. by a full plate. What did I say? Um, created. <laughs> well, they created, right? <laughs> They're creating the food. Uh, You can listen to jazzy music and have fun with the raffle. Uh, There's still time to buy a raffle ticket for the prizes at uh, Bourbon and Browns. And the the pictures that you saw, it's the baskets and stuff like that. Um, The drawing will be held at the event at 8 o'clock, but you don't have to be there uh, to win. Bourbon and Browns is an annual fundraiser to benefit Liberty Hall Historic Site, which includes two historic houses, four and a half acres of gardens, which are beautiful, and thousands of historic documents, artifacts, and artwork. So to purchase tickets or to find out more about uh, the prizes and the event itself, you can go to libertyhall.org and um, get more info about yeah. it. And you go on, tickets. go on there over after, or go on, go over there, go on over there, go on over there after the Common Fest. Sorry, I couldn't get my words in the right order. <laughs> brain not working um all right downtown derby celebration okay. is right around the corner that is not this weekend but the next right next or no it's the, is it this weekend no it's on derby day next saturday right okay well i'm confused because then i saw this thing well it's the derby screen. week kickoff the kickoff is this weekend and that's what we just talked about yes the noon to five right mm-hmm. sorry it's okay um saturday may 6th we'll give all the details for the events on friday and next week uh, from the newly reinvented Triple Crown event to the Kids Derby Dash. Everybody loves that. I know. Uh, stick horse races and derby hat making, pony rides, not to mention food and drink specials. There will be so much for everyone to enjoy. A new event of the celebration is the Hot Brown Trail. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Tell now, me. I'm telling you, either mm. starting Friday and then all next week. Yeah. Again, there are so many events happening that day as part of the Downtown Derby celebration yep. that we have to break each one of them down. Okay. So that's just an overview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we need to get Ellie here to talk about because the Capital City Museum is doing a lot, okay. and we need to get her here to okay. go over it all. So, Hot Brown Trail. Uh, the Frankfurt Franklin County Tourist and Convention Commission, uh, Downtown Frankfurt Inc., and the City of Frankfurt will kick off Derby Week with the Kentucky Hot Brown Trail, and I couldn't be more pleased. Mm. Uh, beginning May 1st and running through May 6th, more than 16 local restaurants and shops will be offering hot brown themed specials mm. and discounts in celebration of Derby Week. Participating businesses, Uh, are offering all kinds of specialties associated with hot browns, uh, appetizers, breakfast items, cocktails, and uh, themed merchandise. So um, you can go to visitfrankfurt.com, and there's a thing on there to click for the hot brown trail, and it will tell you I'm looking at it right now. It makes me so hungry. Yeah, well, tell me some of the stuff on there. Well, Andy's is going to have a hot brown croissant sandwich. Yeah. Uh, You got Buddy's Pizza with a hot brown pizza. Locals Mm -hmm. Food Hub is going to do a hot brown pizza. Completely Kentucky's got a charcuterie board yeah. with many ceramic bowls to serve hot browns. Okay. Um, yeah, I like. Oh, Sig Luster's gonna have a hot brown hot dog. Oh. 
<laughs> Here's the thing. I love I love a hot a trifecta barbecue is doing hot brown cheese fries. Oh. Here's the thing. I love a hot brown, right? I, I mean, do. It, it's they're if not. If it's on the menu, I'm probably not, getting it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the thing, though. It can be a little much, right? Uh-uh. It can be. A it's little much. rich. Uh, I do like the hot brown adjacent things. Okay. Take the ingredients, take the flavors, yeah. and maybe put them in a different form, and okay. that won't be quite so yummy, heavy, <laughs> dense. Uh, that's why I like those ideas. Okay. Kentucky Coffee Tree is doing hot brown soup. Oh. That sounds pretty good. Okay, so that's all week, starting yeah. May first through May sixth. Okay. So you can try a bunch. You can go around. I but never again, I thought, you know, they do taco week, they do pizza week, burger week, hot brown week. I hot like brown it. week, people. We're in Kentucky. Might as well. <laughs> um, okay, what's next? I we. Guess, that was a lot. That was a lot. I know. There's um, lots of things happening. How about we get into our library stuff? Because it is library week. It is National Library Week. In the mid-1950s, Kathy, okay. uh, research showed that Americans were spending less on books and more on radios, televisions, and musical instruments. Well, it was the dawn of a new era. And luckily, that's all changed. We're all back to books now. That's right. Concerned that Americans are reading less, the American Library Association and the American Book Publishers formed a nonprofit citizens organization called the National Book Committee in 1954. Their goals were ambitious. They ranged from, quote, encouraging people to read in their increasing leisure time to, quote, improving incomes and health. Well, hey. That seems good. And developing strong and happy family life. How about that? I'll take that. Well, that's good, too. Uh, With the cooperation of ALA and with help from the Advertising Council, the first National Library Week was observed in 1958 with the theme, Wake Up and Read. Wake Up and Read. And we're still observing it today. That's right. The theme for National Library Week 2023 is There's More to the Story, illustrating the fact that in addition to the books in library collections available in a variety of formats, libraries offer so much more. And we know because we talk about this about it, all yeah. the time. Absolutely. Libraries now lend items like muse- museum passes, games, musical instruments, and tools. Library programming brings communities together for entertainment, education, and connection through book clubs, story times, movie nights, crafting classes, and lectures. All of those things happening at Paul Sawyer Public Library. Mm-hmm. And library infrastructure advances communities, providing internet and technology access, literacy skills, and support for businesses, job seekers, and entrepreneurs. Thank you to our librarians. We do. We need to thank our librarians. And we do. I mean, we give them their due around here. Well, they're awesome. And, <laughs> they, Paul, and we have one of the best. We right do. Here. We have a great library, uh, Paul Sawyer Public Library. We have, um, we like to have them come in and talk about the things that are going on at the library. We always talk about uh, the events. Uh, and we have some coming up, yeah. as a matter of fact. Well, so, we talked about some of the stuff that's going to be happening in Heritage Week, right? Yeah. Obviously, there. But mm-hmm. this week, we've got tomorrow. We're doing a book discussion at the library, and it's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Oh. Maybe this is a book that people love from their childhood. Yeah. Uh, this this Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30, uh, they're, it's going to be the One Book, One Frankfurt. That's right. I forgot that this is the book for yeah, One yeah, Book, yeah. One Frankfurt. Uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. So 6.30 to 7.30 tomorrow. Yeah, they've, got, then, they've got a whole theme thing going there at the library. And then there's like a scavenger hunt they have there uh, well, throughout the library. And they're doing an escape room. Ooh, I like that. And the Mad Hatter Tea Party Escape Room and the Youth Program Room from 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, teens in grades 6 through 12, use your wits to escape this Alice's Adventures in Wonderland themed escape room. Registration is required. Okay. And they say there's still seats available. Okay. So get out there and get registered for that because that awesome. sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done an escape room? No, I haven't. No, like never, not at all. Never. Okay. No. Have you? No, I haven't. I think our group should do it. Like a team, team building, building exercise yeah. for I mean, sure. There's some like down there by the breweries too if we want to go oh. after for some more team building. We can I'm do just that. saying. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but it's funny. We were uh, the oldest at soccer. One of his teammates had gone to an escape room yeah. and then he was like, oh, we need to go to an escape room. Dad. Yeah. When, can we go tomorrow? You know, it's like. Well, I mean, but, I've got a meeting at 11, but we can go after that. <laughs> no? That's what he said to me, not, oh, so, not what no, I'm saying no, to you. I'm, just, I'm fine to no, wait No, I'm just saying. Days, no, I'm offering but, it up. All right. Um, okay. We got, a, we got a pet of the week, Kathy. Okay. We're okay. checking back in with Slipper, oh, an Slipper. adoptable special needs cat still available at the Franklin County Humane Society in this week's pet of the week. She says. <laughs> Oh, 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 
This is Slipper. Slipper is maybe a little different from other cats you've seen. She's mobile, but she doesn't have use of her back legs. She might also be a little different because her best friend is a rabbit named Wander. Slipper's been thoroughly vetted by the Humane Society staff and is a perfectly healthy female tabby. She's spayed and up-to-date on all of her vaccines and has no history of any spinal injuries or illnesses that might have impacted her back legs. She just gets around a little differently from other cats. Slipper doesn't let that slow her down. She moves around just fine with two legs, and she's always up to play and meet new people. Stairs could be tricky for her, but other than that, any home is the ideal home for Slipper. Come meet Slipper at the Franklin County Humane Society today. You never know. You might just leave with a new pet cat and a new pet rabbit. As always, if you aren't able to adopt Slipper, you can always make a donation to sponsor her care or the care of any of the adoptable animals at fchsanimals.org. That little slipper so cute. Yeah, she, it's a cutie pie. Yes. Um, should we do some headlines, Kathy? Uh, yeah, got, let's, you know, do we want to look at some uh, Facebook comments? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. Keep I don't want to keep people there. waiting. Sorry. Nope, you're a good point. Uh, David Hecker says, I think Roy Kent finished... Uh, reading his copy of A Wrinkle in Time if someone is looking to borrow a copy. Oy, you remember that? Oy. Oy. <laughs> There's actually, I did see, I think he gave it, somebody else was reading it this season. Did it, that uh, I think Roy gave, like passed it forward oh, okay. to somebody else on the team and it, okay. and it showed like the spine was all bent up. Okay. And here, the, they're, so they're passing it. The pages it were, were marked. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leslie Smith says um, that her favorites from the second street school library were uh the amelia amelia bedelia Ooh, books i love amelia Sorry, bedelia yeah all these books are making me like feel sad about not sad but like these are like books that i read when my little boys were little and little. now they're not little anymore they're not uh leslie mcshane says boxcar children that was always a favorite in our household okay. and uh trixie belden right. that was another good one andy says Hi, andy. uh my favorite childhood books was Miss Nelson was Miss Miss Nelson is missing. Oh, Miss Nelson. And the two other Miss Nelson books. She was the teacher that dressed as Viola Swamp, the mean substitute teacher. Oh. <laughs> well, Miss Nelson, <laughs> I wonder um, if they found her. <laughs> and then uh, Nancy says Madeline, and okay. yeah, Madeline was great. I yeah, love Madeline. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. That's what's going on on our question of the day. If you want to ju- chime, in. chime in, you still got some time. Let us know. The one childhood book that you loved. Okay. Um, we've got, uh, we, ta- we talked, okay, now let's do, let's do our headlines first. Oh, we're headlines. Yeah, yeah. we got so much to cover, I get confused. Mm-hmm. We talked about this, uh, the announcement of it was like right before our show Friday, I think, okay. or last Wednesday, because were you here last Wednesday? I was. Okay. It wasn't with you. So it was Friday. I think it was Friday. Um, and they actually did the thing on they, Monday. Right. Okay. And so then they actually presented uh, naming Silas House Poet Laureate. Uh, you see him there in the uh, rotunda with the, I guess that's the governor next to him, that's right? That's the governor. They um, did that on Monday in the rotunda because uh, Governor Bashir hosted the Kentucky Writers Day. That's right. Um, Silas spoke of the initiatives he wants to undertake in his new rule. New role. <laughs> He's not ruling. Uh <laughs> Including implementing ways for young folks to get reconnected with elders through writing and oral history projects. I love that. That's a great thing. Yep. Um, he is a nationally best-selling author of novels such as Clay's Quilt, Southernmost, and Lark Ascending. He previously won accolades such as the Nautilus Award, an E.B. White Award, Appalachian Book of the Year, and the New York Public Library and NAV Foundation's Storyline Prize and Lee Smith Award. House, who is married to fellow author and editor Jason Kyle Howard, is Kentucky's first openly gay laureate. His work detail often dwells on the duality of life in Appalachia and the danger of labeling others. That's great. Yeah. So I think he'll be a great poet laureate over the next two years. We look forward to seeing. Is, that, is it two years? That's okay. yeah, it's a two-year term. All so right. So we'll see what he what else he has up his sleeve. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I like the idea of... The yeah. Young kids. Well, and he, you know, he's an Eastern Kentucky guy, yeah. and I mean, uh, oral history is such a big thing. Oh my gosh! You know what I mean? My sister and I back during COVID, we got mm. my dad on a Zoom and mm. and recorded some stuff. Started talking and had him tell us stories from his childhood yeah. and youth, and we recorded it. And we was like, Yep, yep, 
That's doing great. it. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got a. We talked about the, we were at uh, we were at the Earth Day celebration. Yep. Uh, this past weekend. It was a great day. And uh, we've got a little video, right? Oh, okay, good. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Okay. All right, this is Kathy Lindsay here with the Frankfurt Plant Board, and we have been uh, with Together Frankfurt today down at the Ward Oats Amphitheater for the Earth Day celebration. And uh, we have, oh gosh, there's probably 25 booths here that are all talking about things they're doing to, uh, to help make our planet more healthy. And we're doing the same thing at the Frankfurt Plant Board. Uh, we're giving away uh, LED light bulbs, our reusable water bottles, and we're talking about uh, the solar programs that we're having that are going to be coming online very soon. Uh, again, uh, we're talking about our community solar project, which uh, I think is going to be breaking ground this summer right there on the FPB campus. And if, if you're not able to put solar on your, your rooftop yourself, but you want to participate in a solar program, this is a great opportunity. Uh, it's a subscription service for our customers, and you'll be hearing more about that really soon. Then we also uh, have interest in a solar farm in Western Kentucky that is going to be coming online in December. And uh, that is really going to bring our percentage of renewable energy uh, to uh, about 20% in our uh, energy portfolio. And we're really looking forward to that because that's really important uh, to, to look at the future and what we can do to help improve the, our carbon footprint here on our planet. So uh, that's our little uh, contribution to our community here in Frankfurt and Franklin County. And we're really super excited to be a part of it. Well, great job, Kathy. Thanks. I didn't know I was going to be on camera on Saturday. Did you forget that you did that? or Oh, no, before you did. Okay, yeah. I got you. <laughs> I mean, I was there at work. We were yeah. working hard. And it was a good good turnout? It was a great turnout. Nice. And just like, the people were so nice. Together, mm. Frankfurt, they've got it together, let mm. me tell you. Uh, and it was a very well-organized event. And the, uh, all the, the organizations that were there had a lot of good information and... Uh, we had good music, mm -hmm. and we walked over to the farmer's market. It was first opening oh, day right. at the farmer's yeah. market. It was packed, yeah. and so many cool things there. I think it was Kids Day, right? Yes. So they had that, yes. that going on. So they had, they had the, the petting zoo there. They had little bunnies that were so cute, and all of the good. I mean, farmer's market, it's not just, it's not just veggies mm -hmm. and plants. They've got flowers and meats and jams and candles, and I mean, they got all kinds of stuff. Yeah that our local people are making. Love it. Awesome. Well, yeah. thanks to you for doing that and all the other folks from the team, Crystal and Stephanie mm -hmm. and Kathy. Yep. Sure lucky. Yes. So many Kathys. I can't even keep them up. Makes it them. easy. Not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, we appreciate everybody's time doing that and uh, appreciate the well, together again, Frankfurt putting it on. The sentiment is, I mean, on our end, as far as FPB, we love being part of the community. Um, especially, you know, celebrating Earth Day as we're moving towards, we've got some big projects coming up with renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it was a good opportunity to talk about those things. So, yeah. great. Awesome. Uh, all right, let's talk about what's coming up on Cable 10. All right, tonight, Kathy, yes. we've got Global Connections with Bill Miller at mm -hmm. 5 and 5.30. At 6, the Optimist Club, and at 7, the Qantas. And then at 8, the Optimist Club Rising Star Program. That was good. Last week. Yep. Was that, were you out there for that? I went to that, cool. and it was great. It's one of my, let me just say, it's one of my, my favorite programs that the Optimists do, and they do it every year. This was the first year we've done it since we've been back from, okay. uh, since the pandemic. Yeah. So it was great to have everybody in the room and recognize those students who work so hard. It specifically recognizes students who have had uh, challenges to overcome mm. and they're still being successful and leaders in their class. Um, they're nominated by their uh, and awarded by the, the people in their school, their teachers. And we're just happy to recognize them for that. The Optimist Club does a great job with that. I want to thank Brett Smith for coming out and uh, recording it for mm -hmm. us and getting it all put together so that everybody can see it tonight at 8 o'clock. All right. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, April 27th, is Game of the Week time. Uh, it will be live on Cable 10 and YouTube. At 5, we'll have the uh, the first game. It's Franklin County against Western Hills. And then at 8, Game 2. It's a doubleheader. Uh, weather dependent, though, mm -hmm. so fingers crossed okay. on clear skies tomorrow night for um, – for the game of the week folks gotcha uh and then finally on friday we'll be back here at around 10 10 a.m live uh, at five summer concert from last year uh alex key 
And then at 7.30, uh, the summer concert from last year as we're getting getting ready for summer concert. Yeah. Get started here in a couple months, right? I don't know. Well, I mean, um, next month, I think. Yeah. Ben Lacey and Corey Cross at 7.30. Nice. So, um, yeah, good lineup of stuff on Cable 10 this it's week. going to be great. All right. We've got a couple minutes. You want to do a hot topic? We can do a, a hot topic. A hot topic. Uh. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's do let's let's do the hot topic thing. Or is it news of the weird? Well, it might be. We may need the news of the weird sometimes. <laughs> uh, a Virginia animal shelter is seeking a new home for a stri- strikingly corpulent kitty. Oh. <gasps> oh. Uh, Richmond Animal Care and Control said Patches the cat is on a special diet and exercise plan. <laughs> To help him come down to a healthier weight, that's good. Mm. Uh, However, at his current size, Patches weighs in at a staggering 40.3 pounds. I mean, talk about a workout regimen, like (laughs) people picking him up. Carrying that kitty around. How does that happen? Uh, The RACC said Portly Patches is seeking a new (laughs) owner willing to help him continue with his weight loss plan. Um, Did you wake up today and say, let's adopt the largest cat anyone has ever seen? If so, we have the cat for you, RACC said in the Facebook post. Vener- veterinarians say the average domestic cat weighs about 10 pounds, mm. although that number can vary by breed. Patches isn't the flubbiest feline on record. An Australian cat named Himmy took the designation at a weight of 46 pounds and 15.5 ounces oh in 1986. <laughs> And while there may have been heavier counts since, cat since, Guinness World Records has ceased to document any to discourage <laughs> pet overfeeding. And that is a great, great thing that yeah. they are doing. Uh, I mean, cat food and Jeep. Man. So, I mean, somebody's been feeding, maybe they're getting table food. Yeah. Um, okay, let's do, let's do one more. Okay. Uh, we like talking about AI on the show it's it gonna freaks be the, me it's out gonna be the new thing yeah um a song featuring ai generated vocals purporting to be drake in the weekend has been pulled from streaming services by the universal music group Is after going viral this, the label condemned the song called heart on my sleeve for quote infringing content created with generative ai the track was originally posted on TikTok by a user called Ghostwriter977 and mm. shared on streaming service under the artist named Ghostwriter. By the time it was removed, April 17, it had racked up 600,000 Spotify streams, 15 million TikTok views, Holy and 275,000 YouTube views. UMG told Billboard magazine that the viral postings, quote, demonstrate why platforms have a fundamental legal and ethical responsibility to prevent the use of their services in ways that harm artists. Mm. UMG went on to urge streaming platforms to block AI companies from accessing the label songs, saying that it had become aware that certain services had been trained on copyrighted music without required consents. UMG is one of many music was one of many musician representing organizations that have begun posturing for and overtly threatening lawsuits if AI is used to imitate their artists. Right, we're going to continue. Into, we're we're talking continue about the dangers of these things. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, is this just the new like sampling? You know, is I mean, it? we talked about that like yeah. twenty years ago. Like, you shouldn't be using other people's music right. to create new music. Well, how is this different? then you know you're taking somebody else's style or whatever and and putting a new spin on it but is this but this was saying that it was that person right or not no, no it was oh. i think it was all ai generated using other people's like voices essentially oh okay i yeah. don't know I think that's so confusing to me okay it kind of makes my brain go <laughs> sorry turn out the lights <laughs> I'm just over here with my fan. <laughs> oh, no. no, it's we're going to continue to come across these things. So yeah, yeah. So be wary. That's right. I mean, it can be, have good things. They can be good things. Definitely. We just need to keep keep an eye on it. Um, all right. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, folks. You can do it at uh, the main plant board page, FEWPB or Cable Ten KY. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get. Uh, get to see all the great content we put on there hit the bell so you get notified every time bing, we go bing. live like hopefully tomorrow for game of the week yep. um if you have any questions or comments or want to share your community event hit us up at cable 10 at fewpb.com and if you enjoy the show we'd love to hear oh sorry text machine 353 
And if you love the show and we'd love to hear from you, just go to the QR code on screen now. Leave us a five-star review on Google. We'd certainly appreciate it. Um, we want to thank our guests for being here today. Yes. Uh, looking forward to uh, Frankfurt Heritage Week. Yep. Uh, and we also want to thank uh, Brett, Pawpaw, and David for their production work on today's episode. And uh, we'll be back on Friday. We'll be back. Um, and remember, if it happens around town. It's on around 10. Around 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it.